Hey guys, Flamehunter101 here. So I just started watching the Seven Deadly Sins anime on Netflix about a week ago, I think. And I already finished it within a few days of starting it. Well, I don't know if I should be proud of that or not. Anyway, so whenever I start to like an anime, I like to buy merchandise for that anime. So I went onto Amazon and searched Seven Deadly Sins. I kept scrolling until I came across a game called The Seven Deadly Sins Knights of Britannia. It looked pretty interesting, so I looked it up and tried to find some reviews. I watched some reviews and came to the conclusion that it's a generic and bad 3D anime fighting game. But that didn't stop me, so I searched desperately for some positive feedback about the game. I then finally came across the comment that was positive. I don't remember exactly what it was, but it was something along the lines of it may be a bad game, but if you're a fan of the Seven Deadly Sins, then you'll find some enjoyment out of it. Well, that was enough for me, and I went ahead and ordered it from Amazon. And then Amazon lost my package. Yeah, they lost my package, but not before saying it was delayed. Twice. So I refunded it and got the game for $6 cheaper from GameStop. Anyway, now that the whole backstory is taken care of, let's hop right into the game. So the Seven Daily Sins Knights of Britannia originally released on February 9, 2018, exclusively to the PS4. So first you might be like, why only the PS4? But you see, in... In Japan, where the actual game is made, they only have the PS4 and the Nintendo Switch. So most of the time it doesn't get onto the Nintendo Switch, considering it's not where near as powerful as the PS4. And the Xbox One is basically only used in North America, because that is where Microsoft develops it. So they don't usually make games for the Xbox One, except it unless it's like a huge big release, such as Jump Force. Because Jump Force is coming out on Xbox One and PS4. Because it's a big release. Now this game was just some small cash grab, I'm guessing, from Bandai Namco. So it only released on PS4. So the first thing that happened when I started the game was I kept giving me a bunch of alerts that extra side quests had been installed. So at first I was kind of confused about what extra side quests there were, but then I realized that they're part of the Ten Commandments free update they released a while back. So at first when this game originally released, they did not have the Ten Commandments. So, once the Season 3 had released, they released a free update that included new side quests for the Ten Commandments. Next up, a CGI cutscene started playing, and let me just say, it's, it's something. It's definitely something. Here, I'll let you guys watch it. まだ人と So I'm just going to say it, that was awful. That cutscene was really bad, really low quality, the animation was super poor. I don't know what they were thinking with that. So after I got that horrendous CGI cutscene out of the way, I went over to dual mode before I started up adventure mode, that way I could get a feel for the controls and see how all the different characters handle. So right as I open up duel mode, you can see that there's multiple different sections of duels. So basically there's solo battle, where it's just a one-on-one -on -one fight. There's co-op battle, where it's a 2v2. So there's two people per team fighting each other. Then there's a local multiplayer, which is just a 1v1 against your friend. If like, you have another controller, you can have a 1v1 with your friend locally on the same console. Then you have online multiplayer, so it's just the same thing except online. So I went over and chose solo battle, and it brought me over to the character select screen. 
but there are only four characters unlocked from the start. Luckily, they have my favorite character, Bon, already unlocked, so I went ahead and chose him, and then chose Meliodas as my opponent. I just chose some generic field map. After the game loaded in, the two fighters had an interaction with each other, and then the game started up. Immediately I paused so I could see the controls and then learn how everything moves around. So basically it has some pretty basic controls. It's square for a weak attack, triangle for a heavy attack, B for a shooting slash ranged attack, and then there's a button for guarding, and there's one button where you can hold it down and do multiple different things. So when you hold down the button and you press square, that's match attack 1. When you hold down the button, press uh, triangle, that's another one, and then plus circle is another magic attack. So these three, they use up your magic meter, so that when, every time you use it, you take some stamina or magic from your stamina meter. So basically, there's also a guard feature. So basically, guarding, you can just do it forever. You can just hold down guarding, and the only way that someone can attack you is if they hit you from behind. So this might seem impossible to actually get someone if they're just holding down block the whole time. But actually it's kind of easy because they do have this one feature where if you hold down the magic button, which is R1, and you hold it down and you press the jump button, which is X, then you automatically teleport behind the player so you can get him into a combo. Now the teleporting does take up a lot of your magic, but it's still really useful in case someone's just blocking the whole entire time. So another move or feature, whatever you want to call it, is the special move. So once you fill up your special move meter, you can press R2 and execute a super powerful special attack that deals a lot of damage. So now another feature is called the co-op attack. So co-op attacks only work in 2v2s. So basically what you do is you press this and then your teammate, if they choose to accept it, can then execute a team up move with you. And you see, the whole if they choose to accept it or reject it thing, makes sense if you're playing with two people two people per team but if you're just one player with a cpu as your teammate they can reject your team up move so now what i don't get is why would they do that like you're calling them for a reason and if it's a real player then it makes sense because they're probably already dealing with something so they don't have time to get a co-op attack but this is the computer why should the computer care if you want to do a co-op attack or not like, this, this is just a dumb feature. It's like, half the time they'll accept it, half the time they'll reject it. And one time I was in a fight, and Hawk was my teammate, he just kept rejecting every single time. I just wanted to do a, a freaking co-op attack. No, he just keeps rejecting it. Why should the computer care if they want to do a co-op attack or not? It, it's just dumb. So after I finished up my battle with Meliodas, I headed into adventure mode. So I'm not going to go into great in detail on the whole adventure mode and everything, but I'll just give you guys the basics of what's in adventure mode. So basically in adventure mode, you control um, Hawk's mama as you can carry around the boar hat all across the map. So it's an open map that you can walk around in, and the map consists of battles in different locations, and also some trials. So basically battles are just small little battles where you have to defeat all the enemies. Trials are like the same thing except harder, and aren't usually required by the story. And our locations are specific locations that have multiple quests specific to that one location. And now the locations are where most of the story takes place. So when you're at these missions, they can either be kill all the opponents, which is like there's multiple different lower level enemies, or it can be there's one normal character who you have to have like usually a one-on-one -on -one or a 2v1 fight against them. So as you travel around the map and go to different locations and do main quests, there will be these short little sort of like cutscenes where it's just small animated shorts of just the characters interacting with each other. So they're not that impressive, but I guess they're better than just blank stills on the screen. So as you complete missions, you can sometimes unlock some rewards. These rewards are usually materials. So once you have these materials, you can use them to create upgrades on a sort of skill tree like graph. So basically here you start off with just a few that you can unlock. And then once you unlock those you can branch off. 
but you see you can only unlock these with specific materials so you have to make sure you get these specific materials before you can branch off any farther so before i wrap up this video i'd like to just talk about a few things that i found disappointing about the game the first one was a sort of big problem it was the camera controls so basically you can either have it locked on to the enemy so the camera is always tracking the enemy or you can move it freely with the right joystick so you probably want it to be locked on most of the time right that way you don't have to worry about moving around the camera but if you get too close to a wall then basically the camera will just go crazy and not know what to do and it'll start just making it so you can't see anything so that's one problem Another problem was that opening CGI cutscene, but I mean, that doesn't really lower the quality of it. But another problem was the call for help or the co-op attack, where the computer can reject your attack. I still think that's super stupid. And now for my final complaint, it's that it's just pretty generic. They didn't really try anything, they didn't really risk anything. But they were just playing it safe with this game, just so they could cash in on the whole 7 Nelly Sins is popular now thing. But yeah. Those are my main complaints about the game. So as for my final rating for this game, I think I'm going to give it a 6.5 out of 10. The so reason I'm saying this is because of those complaints I just said before, and because it's just generic. You see, I guess if you're a fan of the 7 Daily Sins, I definitely recommend you guys pick this up. But if you're not that big of a 7 Daily Sins fan, you're not really missing out on that much. So yeah, that's my final thoughts on the game. So I hope you guys enjoy. Make sure to comment, like, and subscribe. And I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye.